Step 16, game of mortgages, signing your loan doc. So check this out. This is kind of the big step. A couple of things. Are you in an attorney state? Are you in an escrow state? So like if you're in California, this process will be different than if you're in Tennessee. Don't worry about knowing the difference. We're gonna tell you what it is, but there's some transitions in this video that I'm gonna walk through between the two of them. Also, are you signing remote or are you signing in the office? And what I mean by remote is, are you on vacation and we're signing somewhere? Are you in another country and you're signing at a consulate? Or are you actually doing it at Starbucks because that's just what works best for your schedule? We'll typically try to get you to sign in the office or in your home, but just know that. If we've got to get you signed and it doesn't really fit into your schedule, there is the option of doing a mobile notary. It's typically a little bit more expensive. On our team, we actually always quote the cost of a mobile notary. You're only billed for actual cost, but we're just always planning for that just in case. If you do the in-office uh, signing, which is cheaper, then that's what you would obviously be billed for. A couple things to prepare for in this signing. One, it's like an hour, right? Now you could blow through it in like 30 minutes if you're an expert and you've done this multiple times, but you'll typically have some questions and it's usually 45 minutes to an hour for the signing appointment. The other thing is maybe just stretch your hands out a little bit because you are gonna be signing a lot of documents. These packages can be can be pretty thick. Usually, this we already have this ahead of time, but I think it's important to always bring at least one valid ID, ideally two, so like um, your driver's license and maybe like a credit card. We'll let you know if we're gonna need one of those things, but might as well just grab it to be safe. If you have two people on the loan, both of you have to sign the same loan docs. So that's something that's interesting sometimes if we have a husband in one place and a wife in another place, especially in a relocation, and there's just no way within the period in which we need you to sign that you're gonna be in the same place. We actually have to have you sign in one place, overnight the docs to the spouse in the other place and have them sign and it's two notaries, which is two costs. Doesn't happen all the time, but it is a lot easier if we get you to sign together in one place. You don't necessarily need to bring your money in for closing, right? So don't worry about bringing a cashier's check to this signing appointment unless we ask you to. The ideal way to get your funds in, which we'll talk about in future videos, is usually a wire. It's the safest, it's the cleanest. Uh, we don't have to paper trail a bunch of stuff when it's just wired in. It's hard for the lender to always be at the signing appointment because we're typically in the office working on files. We'll try to be there if we can, but we'll always be available. So if something comes up in the signing, there's a question, just reach out to us. We've done this hundreds and hundreds of times. We know the documents. You don't know the documents. So don't be worried about asking a question about what you're signing. Now, unfortunately, if you're signing mobile, sometimes the mobile notary can't really ask those questions. So that's where you are gonna have to reach out to us. So reach out with any questions that you have in the docs or reach out to us afterwards if you do. We'll typically be following up with you just to make sure that uh, everything was good and you didn't have any questions. But like I said, if something's in the document, don't sign something you don't understand, reach out to us. Every once in a while I have a client ask, hey, can we adjust this? And it's like, no, <laughs> these are state documents, federal documents, there's really no adjustment. Like the boilerplate documents that we're just inputting your information, your rate, the address, the loan amount. So those types of things should be accurate. Your cash to close should be accurate. Make sure you're paying attention to your name, the way, the way that your name is spelled. But if you're looking at one of these documents, you're like, I don't like the way that this is actually written up. Like we can talk about it, but these are like federal documents that are put together. There really is an adjustment into the language or verbiage. The only thing that changes on these things is your personal information and the type of loan and the house that you're buying. And we're creating this in July of 2023. So just note that timing. Um, we're kind of in a place where e-notary is starting to come in, but a lot of states aren't allowing it. We'll get you to e-sign a lot of the documents up front to alleviate some of the stuff, but, but big things like the note and the deed are most states and counties don't allow e-sign docs. They actually want a physical person in front of a physical person signing in front of a notary and actually putting pen to paper. If you have any questions on this process, please reach out. So I'll see you in the next video where we talk about what's the best way to get your cash to close in, like the way that eliminates the most amount of work and frustration for you. Like let's go simple if we can, right? See you in the next video.